James Franklin's weekly press conference. Before we turn it over to Coach for an opening statement, just a reminder that the Happy Valley Adventure Bureau and Penn State Athletics uh, has an announcement at 1.30 today. It will stay on this Zoom. Uh, so if you can remain on the Zoom, uh, we will have uh, Fritz Smith, Joe Batista, and Scott Sidwell uh, making an announcement. So we'll turn it over to Coach for an opening statement. <clears throat> like always, appreciate everybody coming out to cover Penn State football. Uh, statistical summary of, of the Michigan game, you know, the turnover battle was even. Um, the penalty uh, battle we lost by um, yards, not actual penalties, uh, but did lose that. Um, drive start battle we won. Um, sack battle we lost. Uh, and the explosive play battle we lost, which I think was probably as impactful as anything in that game. Um, just a few other notes, you know, that I would mention. You know, opportunities for growth. Uh, we got to score points off of turnovers. You know, obviously, touchdowns, uh, especially when our our defense gets a big turnover um, on their end of the field. Uh, we got to do a better job protecting our quarterback, not just sacks, but hits. And then we got to create more explosive plays on offense and obviously eliminate them on defense. Um, getting into Rutgers and, and Coach Ciano. I've known Coach Ciano for a long time. Obviously, he's done a really good job uh, throughout his career and, and specifically at Rutgers. Um, I think they have the second most uh, super seniors uh, in the conference with 13 uh, that they had returned. And when you kind of get into them uh, on offense with Sean Gleason, his second season, uh, who they hired from Oklahoma State, um, you know, he's really doing a nice job. He's a creative guy, finding different ways to get the ball um, on the perimeter, finding different ways to run inside zone with some, uh, some eye candy. Uh, guys that we've been impressed with is, is Noah Vedral. Um, a uh, young man is 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 playing at a at a pretty high rate, and also on top of that, he's got an interesting background. I, I didn't realize he he's been at Central Florida, um, you know, as, as well as um, I think Nebraska as well. Um, this is his third school, and then Isaiah Pacheco, uh, the running back, uh, seems like he's been playing there forever. Runs extremely hard, uh, is explosive and fast. And then defensively, uh, Rob Smith, uh, their defensive coordinator, has been doing it a long time. Obviously, he's got a, a bunch of history as well um, at Rutgers as well as a number of other places uh, and in the Big Ten at Minnesota as well. Um, they do a really good job. We're, we're really impressed by number 50, Julius Turner. He was an issue last year as well. Um, their nose guard who plays the, the cock nose on, on the center. Uh, really explosive. Their linebacker, number three, um, Fadakusi. And then also their, their safety, Christian Izian. Uh, those, guys, those guys are playing at a high level. And then Adam Shear, who I know very well, their special teams coordinator, second year. Um, creative guy. They're doing a bunch of stuff. They, take, you know, they run a lot of different fakes and misdirections. Um, if you kind of study them over the last couple of years, they, they've made some really big plays. Uh, their punter is, is maybe the best punter in the country, um, best punter in the conference, is a senior uh, from Australia, is averaging over 46 yards, does a really good job of uh, using a wide variety like a lot of the Australian kids do, a, lot, a wide variety of kicks, uh, whether it's a traditional punt, you know, whether they're trying to pin somebody down with a sky punt, uh, whether he's doing a low roller, um, does a lot of different things, cross field kicks. Uh, so we're going to have to be prepared for that as well. But uh, open up the questions. We'll start with Greg Pickle, and then we'll go to Mark Brennan. Hey, Coach, good afternoon. Hope you're doing well. You too, Greg. Coach, how does the way you handle senior day change now with the extra COVID year? How many guys do you expect to have go through that ceremony on Saturday? And then will you – Expect to have some guys who go through it and then come back like Brisker and Castro Fields did last season? Yeah, it's again, you know, everything's kind of changed, obviously, with, with the COVID deal. It's, it's, made it, it's made it different. As you, as you mentioned, uh, we had a number of guys that, um, you know, took part in, in the senior ceremony last year and then still decided to come back. Um, so I think our staff, as well as the players, understand. Um, some guys may not walk um, with the intention on coming back. Some guys may walk 
um, and still haven't made that decision yet um, until we sit down after the season and, and decide. Um, so it's it's very different. It's very different, Greg. Um, and I, I wish I wish I wish I could have a better answer for you, but it's it's hard to it's hard to you know say right now. Uh, just based on everybody in the program having another year, uh, actually uh, Andy Frank, our recruiting coordinator, you know, had a meeting with our compliance department uh, just to kind of go through it all, even from a recruiting perspective. It's it's just kind of a mess um, to predict. You can't use any of the old data that you've studied, you know, over the last ten years to make predictions. Um, it's it's really challenging, and I think you know sitting down with our compliance department and going through that in detail, I think was eye opening to them on uh, you know how messy it is. So um, you know the senior day we're we'll going to make it special for these guys, um, but yeah, it's it's not as clean as I'd like it to be for you guys to be able to know you know who's coming back and who's not. I, I don't think senior day necessarily represents that anymore, at least until we get through this COVID period. Mark Brennan, Lion247, and then John Sauber. Sorry about that. I had to unmute there. James, appreciate your time as always today. Thank you. You as well, Mark. Uh, after the game uh, uh, on Saturday, you said you don't have enough explosiveness besides uh, Jahan Dotson in the offense right now. I wonder if you could expand on that a little bit because there are different ways to look at that. Do you feel you don't have it? it you haven't recruited the explosiveness, or guys aren't just stepping up? Can you can can you expand on that a little bit? Thanks. Yeah, you know, now having kind of time to kind of think about that and and kind of watch the film. You know, obviously, you know Parker Washington has had a number of explosive plays right now. I think right now. Um, we just don't have the explosive plays in the running game. That's that's you know been our been our challenge and our issue. I think we've been running the ball a little bit better the last couple of weeks, um, but there's been some opportunities for for some big plays um, that we've made in the past and and we need to make uh, moving forward. So that that'll be a focus all week long. That'll be a focus this week against Rutgers. That does a really good job of defending the run. Uh, they do a really good job of getting extra man in the box. Um, but yeah, I, I think we've we've been fairly explosive in the passing game. We need to be more explosive in the running game and more explosive overall as an offense. John Sauber, Center Daily Times, then Rich Garcella. James, when your defense is as far ahead of your offense as it is, does it add any extra pressure for it to be nearly perfect to to earn a win any given week? On the defense? Yes. Uh yeah, I think obviously to your point, our defense is is playing extremely well, um, and really has all all season. Um, you know, making big plays. Um, you know, playing bend but don't break defense, and then getting really stingy in the red zone. Um, you know, the defensive staff, defensive guys have have done have done a really good job. Yeah, and I, and I think obviously, you know, obviously um, the more points you score. Um, you know, it, it takes some of that pressure off of the defense. There, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, and as as you know, in in normal seasons, you're going to have a, a year where uh, the offense scores a bunch of bunch of points one week to win, and you know the defense has to hold them to almost nothing another week to win, and it kind of fluctuates kind of throughout the season. Um, obviously, when you're when you're hitting on all cylinders, that that both units on both sides of the ball are, are scoring a bunch of points and and holding people to little, um, and, and we've shown flashes of it. We've shown flashes of it on offense and have moved the ball uh, against some of the better defenses in college football statistically in our conference. So, but yeah, I think I think there, there's no doubt about it. I think the defense is doing everything they possibly can to put our team in the best position to be successful and our offense is trying to do everything they possibly can uh, to put our um, team in the best position to be successful and the same thing on special teams. Rich Scarcella, Redding Eagle, then Audrey Snyder. Hi James, how are you today? Good Rich, how are you man? I'm, I'm great, thanks. James, the offensive line and the running game have been issues all year and you've started four guys pretty consistently on the offensive line. How close have you come to making changes there throughout the course of the season? And with two games left in the regular season, will Landon Tangwell uh, see playing time? Is he ready to play yet? 
Yeah, we, we'd like to get Landon um, some experience these last couple games. There's no doubt about it. You know, I think you guys have seen Efner has played. We'd like, we'd like to get him some more experience as well. Um, Olu's another guy that, that, that we're very high on and, and would like to get, get him some experiences. Um, some games we've, we've planned on doing that, and an injury has not allowed us to do that. Um, whether it's with our starting five or whether it's with one of the backups um, that we plan to get in, but yeah, we, we'd love to be able to get those guys some experience, you know, especially these, you know, these last three games. Audrey Snyder, the Athletic, then Ben Jones. Hey, James. Hey, um, going off of Rich's question, um, because you guys have changed OCs um, and offensive line coaches more than you would have liked here. I mean, do you think that's part of maybe what's showing up this year with the line? That it's just kind of a, a, the meshing of everything. Yeah, I'm I'm sitting here thinking about the number of O line coaches. Um, you know, I, I think yeah. Three. Yeah. So um, you know, in eight years in, in college football, I'm not sure. I don't have the data. I don't know if that is um, average, above average, below average. I'm not, I'm not sure. I don't have that data. Um, but yeah, you know, we we have got to be more physical in the running game. Um, there's nobody that works harder at it than, than Coach Troutwine, uh, all off-season, all in-season, uh, the players as well. And again, I think at times we, we've done some pretty good things against some of the better defenses in, in college football. Um, you know, but, but we got to be better. I, I get it. I understand the questions. Uh, we got to be better. Um, but I, you know, I don't know if it is necessarily to the point you've made, um, you know, uh, I, I'd have to think about that a little bit more, but uh, I know those guys are busting their tail to, to do a great job. We'll do that again this week and, and try to build on it. Ben Jones, statecollege.com, then Corey Geiger. I'm muted. Hey, Ben. Hey, um, can you hear me good? Yes. All right, all right. Um, I was curious about punt return. You look nationally almost half of the country has one or fewer punt returns of 20 plus yards there has the point of punt return changed to just don't drop the ball or is something about that just how you guys have schemed it up this year yeah I, I think a couple things I think if you look at what colleges do um, you know when it comes to covering punts when you essentially are not in the pro style punt anymore, you're a spread punt formation, and you're getting gunners down the field. Um, not just not just two. You're, you know, excuse me, bullets. You're getting not just two down the field, but a lot of times you're getting multiple guys with free releases running down the field in, in coverage. Um, I think that's part of it. I, I think the punters in college football have gotten a lot better over the last ten years. You look at the Obviously, the, the the number of Australians that are doing the you know different types of kicks, whether it's cross field kicks, uh, whether the low rollers, um, that's been part of it. And I think you know uh, guys are punting for hang time and trying to pin people into um, you know a a third you know of the field. Where in the old days you just saw people punt it you know down the middle of the field, and now you're giving one of the better athletes 53 and a third. So. Um, I think that's probably the, the, the biggest thing that I've noticed is that the punting in college has gotten a lot better. Um, and I think people are doing you know, a much better job in, in what we're allowed to do within the college rules to, to cover kicks. I think that's, that's as much as anything. And then obviously when you have a returner like Jahan Dotson, uh, people are putting a, a major emphasis on um, hang time and punt location you know, for our week. So... Um, me and Coach Lord get together every Monday night and, and go through everything in, in great detail. Um, and, you know, I think you're right. You know, more times than not, you know, I'm, I'm watching people not have too many opportunities uh, for returns. Corey Geiger, DK Pittsburgh Sports, then Craig Meyer. Good afternoon, James. Hey, Corey. James, have you personally felt distracted this season? by some of the outside noise? And do you see maybe why some people on the outside might perceive that you've seemed more distracted at times? Yeah, I, I get it. Um, you know, we, we've been in the same situation before and have had, you know, really strong seasons. Um, 
you know, I think you're, you're also in a situation, obviously, this year where, you know, we, we've lost some games that, that um, you know, we, we had a chance to win and, and our record looks a little bit different. So I get uh, people are trying to connect the dots there. Um, you know, all the things that I'm able to, to control, um, you know, I'm controlling, um, you know, but I, but I get it. You know, I, I understand, um, I understand the business. I understand people's concerns. Again, you know, I would just state, you know, looking at my, you know, my track record over my time here, eight years, um, you know, my uh, actions, you know, my behaviors, um, I think I think they've been pretty consistent really since I've since I've been here. Craig Meyer, Pittsburgh Post Gazette, then Mike Gross. Hey James, um, after Saturday's game, your uh, your Penn State teams are two and thirteen uh, against top ten teams. That includes a one a one and seven marking games in which you all were also ranked. I was wondering what, if anything, are you not consistently seeing from from your teams in those types of games, and what do you think can realistically or feasibly be done to kind of change things a bit? Yeah, it's it's everything, right? It's it's um, recruiting, it's development, it's scheme, it's strength and conditioning, you know, it's nutrition. Uh, it's it's everything, you know. We we've done some really good things, but I also know, you know, there's there's some things like you just mentioned uh, that we got to get better, and that goes back to the point that I've made since since I got here. Is I think this is the most competitive sport in in college athletics, and you have to be willing to compete in everything year round. The margin of error is very very small, and you have to be willing to commit. And it's, it's not the, the Saturdays, the Saturdays are part of it, but you have to be willing to compete 365 days a year uh, with what everybody's doing in 2021. Mike Gross, LNP News, then Frank Bodani. Good afternoon, James, how are you? Good, Mike, how are you? I'm good, thanks. <clears throat> um, now that you're, now that the, you're kind of getting close to the finish line of the season and, and given what's happened the last few weeks, uh, are, are you concerned that the, that the guys are a little down and, and that, that motivation could be an issue? I, I know about one and oh this week and, and everything, but, but in the big picture of everything, it, it's hard to put all, I would think it's hard to put all of that out of your mind. And, and, and how do you kind of coach that? Yeah, I think first of all, you, you got to be aware of it, um, and I think to your point, Mike, which is fair. I think you got to be realistic. Uh, we're not robots, right? You know, we we have emotions and feelings and, and those things as well. Um, so, you know, I th I'm very aware of that. Um, you know, with the staff and and with the coaches and and everything that comes with it. You know, there, there's no doubt about it. But but I you know I would say. You know, I look at how our guys played last week, and I thought, you know, you watch the tape, you watch the film, our guys played extremely hard. They competed their tails off. Um, you know, we had a chance to, to win the game, and that's been the case, um, you know, week in and week out. And um, you know, that, that's kind of what I'm looking for at practice, and that's what I'm looking for uh, on Saturdays is, is how hard are we competing? How hard are we playing? Is there things that we got to get cleaned up? Yeah, th there's no doubt about it. But, um, you know, you look at the scores of our games. Uh, you look at the type of opponents we have played. Um, you know, I, I think our guys are, are, are you know, motivated. Um, but obviously, you know, there, there's frustration. There's no doubt about it. Our guys want to be successful for the fans. Our, our guys want to be successful for their families and want to be successful for themselves as well. It's, it's all of that. Frank Bodani, York Daily Record, then Daniel Gallen. Hi, good afternoon, James. Hey, Frank. Um, the running game actually felt different, looked different on Saturday against Michigan, more success. Why? Do, why do you think it looked that way to us after 10 games? Why not sooner? Was What changes did you see? How does that bode going forward? Yeah, you know, we, we just continue to invest in it. You know, we just continue. We, we made some changes about the midpoint of the season in, in our practice structure. 
um, and we've invested in it like like crazy. And and I try to you know on the headsets, try to make sure that we're staying patient with the run game and and continuing to mix those things in there. Um, you know, I think we've been more physical up front with the offensive linemen and the tight ends, and I think our running backs are, are running, you know, and they're more decisive. Um, so, you know, we're just trying to get better every week, no matter what point of the season in season uh, that we're in. We're just trying to get better, and we're going to try to do that again on Saturday against a team that does a really good job of defending the run and prides themselves on it. Daniel Gallen, Penn Live, then Joe Giuliano. Good afternoon, James. Hey, Daniel. Uh, we didn't get the chance to talk to Sean Clifford uh, after the game on Saturday. Uh, just from your perspective, how would you assess how he played against Michigan, and how did he come out of that game physically uh, with some of the hits that he took? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, you know, I'm I'm proud of Sean. You know, proud. You know, Sean's a competitor. He's tough. Um, he's given everything he can to this to this program and to this university and his teammates. Um, but he was he was beat up. You know, he, he's getting hit too many times. He had, you know, uh, I think you know, we had five hits besides the sacks. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of him. I actually literally just got done meeting with him uh, about an hour ago, I guess it was. Um, and, you know, he is he is battling his tail off and I love him and I'm super proud of him. And um, I know he's going to have a great, great week of practice this week. And, and I know he'll do the same thing and play his tail off on, on Saturday. Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer, then Nate Bauer. Hey, James. Hey, Joe. I wanted to ask you about AK. Um, when were you first uh, introduced to him, either by film or maybe recruiting or running into him somewhere? And uh, what made you think that he was going to become the player he has become? Yeah. You know, so I guess the first thing is obviously guys go into the portal, right? And and you know, you have you have people checking the portal and and watching tape and and you know, seeing if he makes sense for us for what our needs are. So that's how it starts. And then and then you you know, you obviously reach out and make contact. We typically try to call the previous school and find out what's going on there and get their opinion. And they just spoke so highly of him. Um, and then me and Coach Galt have known his high school coach for uh, 20 years, I guess. And and he really felt good about his fit and coming to us and, and playing for us. Uh, we felt really good about the recommendation that he gave. Um, and then when you get a chance to get to know the kid and, and, and be around him, uh, he's been awesome. You know, obviously he's made a huge impact for us on the defensive side of the ball. Um, he's always got a smile on his face. Uh, he's had a great experience here. Uh, he's very close with the guys. Uh, the staff loves him. Uh, and then, you know, obviously when he got here and we did the testing numbers right away, you know, we were impressed. He's another guy that was a was a high school linebacker and was a linebacker when he first got to uh, Temple. Um, and that athleticism and that explos uh, explosiveness that he has. Uh, showed up right away in testing and in workouts. And he just, you know, continued to grow within the program. He's got bigger and stronger. And, um, you know, has been has been a tremendous addition. And I'm, I'm super happy for him and his family and proud of him. And he's, he's been great. Nate Bauer, Blue Eight Illustrated, then John Petitionock. Hey, James, how are you? Good, Nate. How are you? Good. Hey, um, if you can reflect on through your career, how strong of a correlation is there between season ending success and failure and how a team goes into the off season, like how it approaches uh, the winter months? Yeah, I, I think it, I'd have to go back and study the data, which you probably already have. Um, but, but I think, you know, I think obviously ending the season on, on a positive note with with wins, whether it's the end of the season or bowl games or whatever it may be, um, I think that's obviously important going into the off season. Um, I think there's also sometimes obviously when things don't go well, and that's motivation as well. Um, um, you know, depending on on who you open the season with next year, that's that's motivation as well. So, you know, I don't know if there's one. You know, specific way, um, you know, to look at it, or one specific way um, that it plays out. I think it really depends on the personality of your team uh, year to year. Um, but obviously, whenever possible, 
you, you want to end on a positive note. You want to start on a positive note. You want to, in the middle, be on a positive note. Um, you know, from a production on the field standpoint, from a recruiting perspective, uh, to to off season, you know, good good vibes and and uh, and those types of things. Mojo. I think it's obviously that's what we all want. You know, I want I want the fans and the media and and the players and their families and the community all all feeling great. Which for for the most part, uh, that's how it's been around here. John Petitnock, the football letter, then Ali Berube. Good afternoon, James. Hope you're doing well today. You too, John. You've often talked about wanting guys to return after graduating. In every game, there's typically a large crowd of lettermen on the sidelines. I just wanted to ask, when it comes to letting players know that you want them to be part of the program long term, does that come up during the recruiting process or does that conversation happen later on? Yeah, it comes up during the recruiting process. It comes up while they're here, obviously. Um you know, um, for us, obviously, with a with a coaching staff coming in after the same coaching staff being here for a really long time, um, you know, we have, we've had to work really hard at at building those relationships and getting those guys back because it's just different. You know, it's just different for them to come back after you know 50 years of it, it being you know pretty much the same. Um, so having a guy like Spice back this weekend, it was great. You know, he came by Sunday morning and was in my office. We got a chance to spend some more time together. I've, I've developed a, a really strong relationship with Spice. Got a ton of respect for him and what he's been able to do throughout his career. Um, and I think, you know, the, the guys that have come back, obviously having Puzz back this weekend, um, you know, was huge. You know, uh, was huge for us. You know, um, has not been back very often, um, you know, since he got done playing. And, and he was awesome. You know, we we you know we were able to spend a little bit of time together and and, and then exchange some messages after he left. Uh, but you know what an unbelievable example that guy is of of uh, you know what you can do at Penn State and and where Penn State can take you. Obviously after after you get done playing. Ellie Berube, then Bob Flounders. Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now, Ali. Oh, sorry. I don't know what happened. Um, Coach, when you look back at these last five games, is this a team that's just that close to turning some of these into wins? Is it a team that needs some pieces this offseason to, to push you guys over the hump? Like, how do you look at this stretch? Yeah, I think it's a it's a combination of both of the things that you said. Um, you know, we have we have played really good opponents um, close and and had opportunities to win um, a few a few plays um, you know uh, in either direction um, and, and we get we have huge wins uh, huge wins um, and then obviously always uh, always you're trying to uh, recruit and and improve your roster and and create as much competition as you possibly can to bring out the best in everybody. Uh, that's always the case uh, year in and year out. But but yeah, I think you know you're talking about a team that you know has has been very very close um, and had some had some you know significant um, you know battles and and challenges to work through. So. Um, again, I'm proud of our guys and, and you know, want to have a really good practice today and really good meetings today to give us the best chance to be successful on Saturday. Two final questions. Bob Flounders, Penn Live, then David Eckert. Good afternoon, James. How are you? Good, Bob. You? I'm good. James, I know at the, at the beginning of the year, even back in July uh, at Big Ten Media Days, you were very excited about the potential of your tight end group and their depth and what they could do. Uh, after 10 games, have they met your expectations and where would you like to see them improve? Yeah, I think uh, probably a, a couple different things. I think, uh, yes, I, I still feel the same way about the tight ends that I did in the beginning of the year. Um, I think there's been some games that they've played extremely well. Um, I think there's been some games where we've gotten them really involved and have had an impact. I think there's been some games where we probably should have got them more involved. Um, you know, obviously after the fact, looking back at it, you know, number of touches and opportunities and things like that. All three of those guys uh, have done some really good things. And then obviously there's there's some games and some plays, uh, which will always be the case that that you wish you had back. But yeah, I think it's a I think it's a really strong position. In a really strong room, I think Ty Howe's done a great job with those guys. 
Um, and, and I'm very pleased with them. And I think, you know, they continue to have a really bright future the rest of the season and moving forward. Finally, David Eckert, Blue White Illustrated. Hey, James, how you doing? Good, David, you? Doing good, thanks. Um, I guess kind of on the explosive play topic and I guess just explosiveness in general, are there things that you can do in season from a practice or, or strength and conditioning perspective to help achieve that? Or is that something that just kind of has to happen just based on off season preparations? Thanks. Well, I think it's, you know, I think it's, I don't think it's something like that you can become, you know, more explosive, you know, dramatically during the season as a, as a, um, specific athlete, you know, but as an offense, obviously there's things that you can do to put people in conflict from scheme. Um, there's, there's the ability to strain on blocks to create a little bit more space in the hole to, to make the safety miss. Uh, it's, it's doing a great job when you do get um, into the open field on the perimeter of making people miss um, or breaking tackles and creating the long runs. Um, you know, it's, it's a combination of all those things. And, and you know, we're, we're going to continue to work at it, um, keep coaching those, those details, and, uh, and find ways to be explosive come Saturday. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. Just a reminder, we will have at approximately 1.30 the uh, Happy Valley Adventure Bureau major announcement. Uh, it'll include Fritz Smith, Joe Batista, and Scott Sidwell. We will be putting you all into the waiting room for the uh, time being, but then we will uh, bring you all back in when uh, we have our speakers. Thank you very much.